three string lesson so this one is following on from the main sort of lesson we did for uh, all right now which was earlier in the year and by request here is the solo and to be honest I think it's probably just about as iconic as the actual main track itself you know great classic rock solo a um, little bit tricky but it's, uh, it's it's doable compared to some in the in the style so uh, if you think you can manage it it'd be great to have a go at and the original song is actually uh, what we call two frets higher than this. So I'm still in standard GDG tuning here, what we've classed as our standard tuning, but the original is actually in the key of A. So you could either go for a capo on fret two, although in the solo I actually hit my top fret, so it might not be feasible. Uh, or if you wanted to play along with the original recording, what you'd probably do is get a thinner set of strings and tune everything like the equivalent of two frets higher, but so that would be uh, A, E, A. But it still sounds pretty good even if you're just playing on your own. So let's tune up and we'll get started with it. So we've got G, D, G. And if you're interested, there is a uh, completely free song chart available from the website. So there's a link above or in the text description below. And uh, you know, if you wanna play along with the full track, it's quite useful for the structure. But uh, let's just get straight on with having a go at the solo. So let's get straight into the solo. And now it builds up. So it starts with some nice sort of sustained notes and Fret five on your middle string is uh, what we call the root note. That's where it starts. And you can do a little hammer on into that. So you can start from fret three on your middle string with say your first finger and tap down. So pluck that and, and tap down with your third finger. You can even slide into it. You know, so uh, either works great, but start start from fret three, pluck it, slide in, or hammer on. And then the next note's definitely a slide, <clears throat> and that is staying on fret five on the middle string. You slide up two frets, and you do it again, and then you slide back down. Okay, so there's other videos where I've covered like hammer-ons and pull-offs and slides, so I'll put a link if you want to brush up on any of these, because there's quite a lot of them. So, phrase one, hammer-on. Slide up. Slide up again. And slide back down. Do it again, slide up again and slide back down, okay? And I'm just gonna go over the first bit b before the notes get too, too uh, long and I'll, I'll sort of then explain what's happening with the rhythm. So straight after that, we're gonna go up to fret 12 on the same string on the middle string. Obviously you can see I'm playing with a, a pick for this one. I think it's definitely advisable. Uh, you get a better sort of rock tone with a pick. So, Play fret 12, slide up to 14, and then slide down. Same deal again, slide up, slide back down. Okay. Timing. So that's on the beat, so it's like three, four, one, two, three, four. Beat one, one, two, three, and four. One. So we're hammering on or sliding, whichever one you want to do, on the beat. So it's one, two, three. Leave it for a whole bar. Slide up on the beat. One, two, 
three and four. One, two, three, four. And then the next one, one, two and three, four and one. So you slide just, you slide into the beat. So you go and three, four and one. And I do believe you do the same rhythm when you go up here. You can, you can slide into that if you want, make it more dramatic, but basically fret 12. One, two, and three, four, and one. So it's the same sliding into the beat again. I'll do that one, two, and three, four, and one. Four, one, two, and three, four, and one. So that, that uh, rhythm up here sort of echoes what's happening down, down there. It's largely got a sort of major pentatonic -y sound, but it kind of gets mixed up quite a lot, so I won't, I won't really cover scales too much in this one. But once you've done that, then there's a really nice sort of iconic bend type riff. Now the best way of playing this on three strings is slide into fret 14 on the bass string, and then hold fret 12 on the top string, and then a little bend. Now we're going to have to pull this one down. We're going to lose lose frets if we try and bend up. So I'm I'm grabbing on with a couple of fingers here, just to give it a bit more support. So bend it. Now it only needs to be a one step bend. Gives it a sort of bluesy kind of character. Uh, one fret, sorry, which is half a step. So it's like slide into fourteen and then bend and release. You want to hear it go back to the original pitch. And then there, back to fret 12. And that again is on beat one. So it's one, two, and three, and four, one. So you're landing on beat one there. And I reckon let's try all of that from a different angle. So we've got three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, three, up to twelve and three, four, and one, two, three. Four, one, and then into bass string fourteen. So, a couple of things. Thing one, I just put a little bit of distortion on here. So Now, if you, if you listen closely to the original song, uh, you can hear a really nice grit where certain notes are interacting. Because if you play a single note with distortion, it sounds like a single note. Play two notes, it sounds like a sort of epic power chord kind of thing. So um, if I try not to catch string one and I slide up, that's naturally ringing out. See, I just stopped it there. Um, Even catch, I can even strum through just to get a bit of interaction. So, so that's why it's quite nice to, to play all of this melody on, on, on this uh, middle string. The other thing you might notice is I'm doing a bit of vibrato. Now, I would strongly recommend that you learn how to play all of this first. So maybe just skip over this, come back to it. But Vibrato is like controlled bending. I've just done this for slide playing, but um, for normal fretted playing, if you um, sort of like anchor your hand here, so, so the base of your first finger and then your thumb on top, you've got like a clamp and it's almost like you're opening and closing a door. So that's bending. Vibrato is just uh, like an oscillation fast controlled 
fast control bending really, sort of like little micro bends in a repeated constant rhythm, constant speed. So on any of the long notes, it sounds ace. And you know, that's the sound of classic rock solos really. You know, so you, you can practice putting it on any of them. You might find it easy to just do it with one finger to start with, so maybe the third finger. You know, like that. Apart from here. You probably want to use your first finger because of what you've just played beforehand. So there, I'm trying to sort of pull, pull down like that. And, and so the, the fact that I'm clamping is, is preventing my finger from uh, sort of m moving all the way down because I'm obviously fretting the note as well. So I can, I can get again that sort of constant oscillation so it's like a wrist, wrist movement as opposed to a finger movement. Try not to make it in your fingers, try and make it from the whole forearm. Right, so after that we're going up to, it gets higher, um, after that lasts for a whole bar and then you hit that on beat one and that lasts for two bars. And then there's a really classic sort of country-esque major pentatonic lick which is So if you bar the top two strings, just um, clamp, clamp down with the pad of that index finger, first finger, and what you're going to do is you're going to pluck the middle one and you're going to hammer on from, that's fret 12, and you're going to hammer on to fret 14. And then you're going to play what you're already barring on string one. So it's pick, middle string, hammer, pick the top string, do it again. Pick, hammer, top string. Picking direction, definitely go down, up, down, up, down, up. Now this is a group of three notes, but they're not what you call triplets. It's, it's actually a sixteenth note rhythm. So it's like one, two, three, Four. So you got four notes per beat, and so because it's a three-note phrase, it's it's kind of snaking across the beat. Um, it's very similar to that Sweet Home Alabama that I did last year. So you can basically fit five of these into a bar. So you can go one, two, three, four, five, and then go into a bend after that. So there's no gap. Don't go. It's got to be straight in, so it goes. So constant tempo, and they're gradually moving across the beat. So you can fit five of those into a bar with a slight pause at the end, and then the bend is fret 14 on that top string. So I'll try that again from this angle. So it's one, two, three, four, five. There's vibrato on the top of that bend, which is quite difficult. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll come back to that. So you basically do that twice. Uh, so let's just have a listen to the counting. So four and one. Two, three, that bend lasts for a whole bar. Do it again. One, two, three, four, five. And then bend again. Now it's a really slow bend and release. You want to hear the release come back down this time. 14 on the middle string, back to fret 12 on the top string. Do that again. 
Now, I've run out of octaves here because uh, obviously it's a six string guitar originally and it gets really high, it's sort of like, uh, so so what I, I did was on the, 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 the demo, just because there's also a little bit of grit because he, he, he sort of keeps the top string ringing out, I, I uh, dropped down an octave briefly. <laughs> just so we've got a little bit of interaction between the notes. So that was just sliding into nine. And I'm just catching that top string as well. You don't have to do this. You can just do this three times if you want. Third time would be great. Sounds ace. Or the third time, if you want to instead, you can slide into nine on the middle string. But whichever one you do, let's just get rid of that distortion for a moment. After that, it then goes minor pentatonic, much more rocky, slightly less country edged. And this time, instead of hammering on, uh, so you still got the bar at fret 12, but instead of hammering on to 14, you then go to 15. And that is the same rhythm, still five of them. And he does a bend at the end of that one, but uh, it's on this middle wound string. I'm not going to attempt that before I put it out of tune. So I'm going to slide into, so if that's 15, slide into 17. Fortunately, I've got 17 frets here. So it's one, two, three, four, five. Let's try that again. Try it from this angle. So three. Slide in. Now, this time we go to the bar again, but we go string one, string two, and then let's bend 15 on the top string, release, back to 12, back to 15, and then slide up again. So it's bend 15 on the top string, 12, back again, slide up on the middle string to 17, back to 12. Now this time we want a bend into the last note, so uh, I, I much prefer bending easy strings. So I've uh, bent on the easy string by knocking down to fret 10 and bending up to fret 12. Now that is, uh, that's also the, the octave, that's also a G in this tuning, so you do want to be quite accurate there. It's about there, I think. So all that phrase is... And then string one, string two, bend, release, slide up, 12, bend up from 10 to 12. Do that again, another five. Same idea, little bar, string one, string two. Two bends here, these are full bends by the way, need to go up two frets. So it's And then, so two bends there on 15, 12, 15, all on the top string, back into 10, bend up to 12. And then just to finish off, 12, 10, bend, release, 9, and then 7. I'm going to prepare a bar. And then I'll, I'll do a little um, strum on the power chord. And then we can... So that's in the, the previous video, uh, which is the chorus riff. So let's try all of that from here. String one, string two. D. 
do it again. String one, string two. Bend twice. 12, 15. Bend up again. And then 12, 10. Bend. 9, 7. Strum. Fret 7, which is a D in this tuning. Now, I used a looper in the demo, so what I'll do is I'll play through it all one more time and I'll go nice and slowly. I'm going to play it on clean and you can try and play along with me. Incidentally, those bends with vibratos, that's, that's quite difficult. Um, I would work on the vibrato first. It's exactly the same movement, but you've got to make sure that you're getting it from your elbow because you've got to hold the pitch of the bend and then put a wobble on it. And again, it needs to be an even thing. It's got to make, you've got to make it feel easy. You don't want to make it feel difficult. Okay, but just pr practice the main vibrato first and remember it's got to be like a standard bending movement. Don't, don't do it with your fingers. It's got to be the whole arm moving. But let us try and play the whole thing with a bass line. There's the bass line. Here we go. Start. Move up. One, two. And fret twelve. bend on the bass string. And top string. Two bars there. Three, four. And again. Bend on its own. And again. I went low this time. Third time. Just so there's a bit of a contrast when you go back to the minor pentatonic. Okay, so there it is. I hope that's fun. I hope it's not too difficult. You know, there's some quite tricky runs when it gets towards the end of the solo there. But uh, if you can play it, fantastic. And obviously, even better if you've got a loop pedal because you can play the bass line at the same time. But uh, if you want to combine this with the original track, then obviously you can revisit the, the, the earlier video that I did sort of back in February, March, I think it was. And uh, that'll show you the basic chords for the uh, intro, which is also the verse and the chorus and whatnot. But we'll be back very soon and uh, may well be looking at a, uh, another lead part for another song that we revisited. So watch this space and I'll see you here again soon on Code Guitar.